All right. Well, hi, I'm Megan. I am on the marketing team for Times Tales, and my background is also elementary education. You might have seen me in a a lot of the different videos that have been posted, but I'm a huge um, advocate for time sales because I've used it myself and seen it work um, so many times. Um, and today I actually decided to bring in a friend. Um, this is Kirsten Johnson. She is, uh, well, actually we'll talk about her in just one minute. I just want to say that today we wanted to talk about the importance of children knowing their multiplication. Um, and so, yeah, Kirsten, can you kind of give us a little bit of a background on what you do and your qualifications. Yeah, uh, I am a math and English tutor and I have been doing that for several years now. And I got my uh, bachelor's degree in secondary education majoring in mathematics. Awesome. And don't you have your master's as well? I do. Yes, I have that in educational leadership. Awesome. Wow. Well, um, especially because you've been a math tutor, I feel like you've been, um, cause like as an elementary teacher, right? Like it's math is only a certain part of a day of the day. Whereas you actually were working at a math academy, right? Where you were working, um, one-on-one -on -one with the students. What can you kind of tell me about that? Yes. Yeah, so I worked uh, for a company where I did um, tutoring mainly over the phone. I have also done in person, but a lot of them has been online, especially when COVID started. Um, a lot of that was online. And I did primarily work with high school students um, and in like algebra or uh, like the higher mathematics geometry, those ones. Um, and a lot of them I did realize, relied on a calculator a whole lot, which tended to make some things difficult when it came to the harder problems. Mm, wow. Yeah, you're definitely a person to talk to about this then. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into talking about why multiplication is so crucial for children to know. Um, first off, I would like to maybe address some of the comments that I've seen on our website is that, you know, our kind of tagline for some things is that gets rid of rote memorization. Um, mm. And people sometimes don't like that. They say like rote memorization is absolutely necessary. So what is your thoughts on that? Especially for kids with like dyscalculia, I think it's like calculia. I don't know if you've heard of that. Basically where numbers, um, they, they can switch them around and stuff mm -hmm. or dyslexia. What are your mm. thoughts on that? Right. I understand um, the fear of getting rid of rote memorization, especially uh, people that have a background in like traditional education. I, personally, like mine was more traditional education. That's what I'm very familiar with. But as I've been out in the field, while I do love traditional education, the rote memorization, I don't think it works for everyone. I, I personally have seen it does not work for everyone. And I don't think you can just take one one single thing and force all students. I mean, we talk about um, how each kid is an individual and they all have their own personalities. So then why does education have to be like one certain way and we expect them all to learn the same way? And why I, why I say like, I think sometimes the yeah, rote memorization is good and that's what I would try first. When I see a kid struggling, I'm not going to keep using something with them that's not working. I'm going to, as a teacher, as a tutor, I'm going to care more about my student and what they need to succeed and find different ways to help them succeed. Yeah. And with that being said, um, I've seen that as well, especially when I was a fourth and fifth grade teacher. So when I would come in, the children, most of the children didn't need time sales. So um, at least in the first class that I taught. And so I actually didn't really use it. However, the second class, most of my students were on um, were on task with where they were supposed to be in the year. But then I get new students that didn't know it at all. And rote memorization, like I didn't have time. I couldn't count on their parents to go home and work with them. So it was like, all right, time sells it is. So yeah. I think like it just does depend on the type of learner you have, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't you yeah. say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Big time. Mm-hmm. And we are actually accredited by, or at least recommended by um, Susan Barton, who is a huge, uh, she has a whole thing about um, dyslexia and she gives us like a stamp of approval that we work super well with that. So it also works mm -hmm. for children without special needs or whatever, mm -hmm. um, because yeah, as we know, there's no definition of normal, but <laughs> yeah. it works for the average student, the average student. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So yeah. Okay. 
Really cool. So another thing that we've come up with, um, and I think we had mentioned this before when we were talking, is that a lot of parents say, um, you know, why do children need to know their multiplication super well if you walk around with, you know, your calculator mm-hmm. all the time? So yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that is the biggest fight <laughs> among the math teachers. Math tutors is like, why do I need to learn this? I have my phone with me all the time. Um, and while that is valid and yeah, it's easy enough to pull out your phone. Uh, I think when you, when you're getting, first off, when your child is getting into the higher mathematics, like I was talking about earlier, algebra and geometry, they already have so much going on. There are so many steps. I have helped students fill a page for one algebra problem. There are so many steps they need to keep straight. So why are we going to hinder ourselves even more by relying on something else and without giving them the tools they need to be able to quickly figure out uh, two times five? You're just slowing yourself down if you're having to pull out a calculator or pull out a phone when you could just quickly be going through the problem and spending your time and worry on a, the bigger part of the problem. Um, another, so when I bring up that point, then I have a lot of parents be like, well, I don't think the higher mouths like algebra are that important. Um, yeah, my kid isn't going to be a doctor or my kid wants to do this and that has nothing to do with algebra. Okay. That's valid. Like not everyone is going to need the certain algebra problems in their lives, but it gives them the confidence they need to go out and succeed in the world. And I say that in the simplest things, like the other day I was in the kitchen cooking with my husband and he was like, wait, how do I convert this into teaspoons? And I was able to quickly be like, oh, that's this. And it's because I, part of that is because I had the multiplication tables memorized. I was able to quickly think that through instead of having to pull out my phone look it up on Google, take some time. No, I had the confidence I needed to move forward with that recipe in the store. Same thing. How much does something cost? How much does it cost per ounce or something? I'm able to quickly do that calculation. So, and I think in the workforce too, it makes a big difference. Your your child can stand out from other people when they see they're able to have the confidence in doing the simplest task. So I think confidence plays a very big role and shouldn't be dispensed. Mm, right. And that's too, is what we've been talking about is math confidence. So mm-hmm. my question too, so with that, with math confidence, cooking in the kitchen is super important. And that's something too, that you can work on with your children, right? Like mm-hmm. that's something you can even start to foster now. However, yeah. what about, um, I know you had mentioned with your job, like, mm-hmm. can you kind of talk about how that could translate into everyday life as an adult? Yeah. So uh, I worked a customer service job, which I think is a pretty common job among people to have, you know, and, you know, just answering the phones, uh, talking, I helped sell curriculum. And it was so much easier to, as I'm talking to someone, be able to do quick calculations confidently in my head instead of stuttering over the phone, pulling out a calculator, trying to keep up with them and figure out their problem as they're still yapping away in my ear. Um, And then, and if I had confidence in my quick answers, then that also gave them confidence in me because it's like, oh, she knows what she's talking about. And even with um, my bosses, I know like, for a time, like there was a few instances where I stood out because they had a question, something with numbers, and I was able to give a quick response. And nowadays they're just not used to that because like you said, everyone's pulling out their phone. Everyone's pulling out a calculator. It really is just a simple, quick calculations and having that confidence in your answer can make a huge difference. And And when you see that other people are confident in you and having the answers as simple as that, it also gives you more confidence in, I know what I'm doing. I can do this job. So Mm -hmm. I know quite a few times I gained confidence in my job just because I was able to have simple answers ready and available. Wow. That's awesome. 
I think too, yeah, that is such an important thing for a child to do is to have confidence. And that's part Mm -hmm. of the problem with rote memorization I found was when I asked a student like what six times seven was, and -hmm. then they don't know. So then they're going back to, well, six times five is 30. And then if you add six, that's 36. And then, and you know, it's, there's Uh not confidence, there's numbers, Mm -hmm. there's finger counting. Like, it's just, it saves time. It gives you confidence. I mean, to have your multiplication down really is such a a crucial thing. And then um, we talked about the math confidence already, I guess, Um, that that was one thing we were going to bring up. Um, And then I was going to ask for you, I know that you were homeschooled growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you have any early uh, memories of how you learn? Um, Yeah, about what maybe, and then age-wise too, what maybe is too young to start kids with learning? Or yeah, just what's your opinion on that when it comes to math? So yeah, a little bit about your background and then kind of what you would suggest for children to learn their multiplication. Yeah. Uh, So yes, I was homeschooled all the way through. So from kindergarten to 12th grade, I was homeschooled. Um, And I do have early memorizations of the rot memorization method. You know, my dad sitting there with flashcards and going through them and um, my mom giving me a sheet of paper and me having to fill them out. Speed drills. Oh, those were my nightmare as a kid. I I remember (laughs) just really disliking those. Um, I, while I could calculate them in my head, I wasn't always the fastest. So the speed drills like scared me the most, but, um, yeah, that was not a fun part for me. So, uh, that it was surprising to, I think most people when I went for a math degree later on, um, just because, like I said, I wasn't the fastest and I didn't always enjoy math. It wasn't like my first one in elementary. Um, but because of the repeated learning, I gained the confidence I needed. And when I got into algebra and all that, I just, I just really enjoyed it. And I gained, I gained, um, the, the joy from just being able to look at a problem and say, I did this by myself. And I think that's what I found the most joy of. Um, and it, it turned into being fun for me. So I would say, don't give up on your child going through memorizing those times tables because you give them that foundation when they're young and when they get older and are doing the harder problems and can see like, I can actually do this. It's going to make a world of difference. I I have tutored so many kids where they didn't have that foundation of knowing their times tables and they just felt so defeated when mm. it came to the harder subjects because, oh, they miscalculated a just like simple, simple part in the huge problem. And it was so ever so slightly off and they just felt so defeated. And that's so sad to see. And because then they lose confidence even more of which we talked about. Um, and they feel defeated. Math is it's already hard, but now it's just unenjoyable. It they're frustrated that they want nothing to do with it. And that's really hard to see. So if your child is struggling, try different methods. Like it doesn't have to be the rot me- like memorization. Try different methods. Try to make it more enjoyable for them. Yes, math is probably the most disliked subject, but like it doesn't have to be hated. Like try to find ways to get them to engage with it and give them a firm foundation to be able to see, wow, I can do the harder problems because I had a solid foundation. Uh, as far as for like how young is too young, I I mean, I personally don't think anyone's too young to learn. I am all about introducing things as young as possible. However, I think there are those overzealous parents that are like, my child is so smart and they overdo it. So yeah, start when they're young, introducing numbers to them. Start, uh, if you can see they're picking up quickly, then start doing addition and subtraction, you know, do simple things. Don't push your child. Because if you go to the extreme of they're smart and you just start throwing things at them when they're like two or three years old, that kid's going to run away. They don't want anything to do with school. But my younger brother, when he saw all of us doing school growing up and my mom would just introduce little things for him, maybe like 10, 
15 minutes a day. Just do little things with them. See how well he grasps it. If he does it well, maybe introduce a little more, but don't overdo it. And pretty soon he was sitting at the table by himself. Give me more, give me more, like wanting to be with us because my mom made it enjoyable. My mom made it desirable. She didn't overdo it. So that's why overall, I don't think it's ever, you're ever too young to start learning. But when it comes to, I want my child to be the smartest kid, don't overdo it. Just see what they can handle and just lay off when you can tell they're done. That's awesome. And it's cool to hear that your mom had that approach to homeschooling, right? Because there's so many different types of homeschooling. Yeah. Um, and then just to wrap up our discussion, the last thing that I wanted to ask is as an educator, like what are your honest thoughts on time sales? Because I know some people, especially being traditional, are going to say rote memorization mm-hmm. or that um, it is not, yeah, it just has stories and like that just like we don't always want them thinking about stories all the time and mm-hmm. like, you know, how does that even translate? Yeah. So like, yeah. can you give me your honest opinion on kind of your thoughts on how it works, who it's for, and kind of, yeah, just if you would recommend it or not. Oh, yes. So I honestly, I love it. And I, I, that's my honest review. I really love it. And for me personally, I remember as a kid, I, I memorized things easier or found that I remembered things easier uh, when it was more of a story, because that to me was more engaging, uh, than just being sitting here with cards and going through them. I, that was not engaging to me. That was awful. Um, so I am all about the stories being helpful to me. That is, makes it so much easier. Even in college, I remember if I had a hard time memorizing something, I would try to make up a short story or something little with it so that I could remember it. Um, and like I said, I go back to each kid learns differently. So don't push the rot memorization. If you see it's not helping them and it's making them frustrated, try, try. I highly recommend trying the stories. They, they are so engaging and so helpful and like, and fun. I really think learning should be fun. Like it shouldn't just be miserable. So have some fun. Well, and, you know, for me, kind of going back to the rote memorization thing, for me, it was difficult because if I'm trying to ask them seven times seven and they're like, they don't even know like seven times six and then they're counting up and it's taking so long versus as a teacher, if I know the stories, you know, and they're struggling, I have something to pull from. I have something to Mm -hmm. kind of go back to. So like, for example, the story for um, the... Six, uh, six times four is a sixth grade class played musical chairs for 24 hours. And so if the children are sitting there and they're kind of like, I don't know, six times four, I'm like, okay, well, what was the six, six grade class? What was the four? It's a chair. What did they do? And then they're like, oh, 24. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, versus I would have had to been like, all right, well, what's six times two? Okay. Add six more, that's 18. All right. So now we're at three. What's four? You know, it just, Mm -hmm. it's such a time saver. And as a teacher, it gives me something that I can kind of help remind them because with rote memorization, I don't really know, like, and I, maybe you could correct me on this, but it's like, how do you remind a child other than counting up from one that they are confident on? You know, that leaves a lot of room for having holes in the, um, in the memorization. Oh yeah. No, definitely. I, I agree. In, because you're sitting there with the card and you're like, come on, what is it? Come on. And then a lot of teachers, when they see the kids start using their fingers, like, ah, 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 you have to pull it from your memory. But how are they going to pull it from their memory if they truly like don't know it and they have nothing to go back to, to try to trigger that, that memory of, oh, six times four, 24. Stories are just so helpful for triggering. Absolutely. And in time cells, we use a base of mnemonics, which you know, being in college, I remember using that to memorize dates and stuff and it always mm-hmm. sticking way more than a bunch of random numbers. So yeah. especially because it's such a crucial part to their foundation in math, I really think mm-hmm. time cells is definitely an amazing option to memorize your times tables. And again, maybe it doesn't work for every child. We're not claiming right. necessarily that it does work for every child, but we're saying, especially if you've got a student that's struggling, especially if you have a student that is just like not wanting, like, wouldn't you much rather spend an evening with your child playing games or having a fun time than sitting there with the flashcards, you know? 
So exactly. we're a time saver. We're fun. There's, you know, there's so many benefits to time sales, just mm -hmm. like aside from just learning multiplication fast. So yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Awesome. Well, I think that about wraps up our, our um, discussion. So thank you for joining me today, Kirsten. I appreciate it. And bring in your math credentials to uh, time sales for a little bit. <laughs> of course. Thanks for having me. I love being here. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think that is about where we'll end for today. So I will talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye.